Welcome to time, everybody. Walker Dead here, back again with another video for you guys. This is Season 3, Episode 1 of my Walker Dead reboot series titled Months Gone By. Thank you all so much for the love and support. I really, really do appreciate it. And as always, let's get into this uh, episode now, shall we? The episode begins with Rick and the crew opening this door and they just kill mad walkers. Carl searches the whole place, as do Daryl, John, and the others, and they all stay clear. Uh, Brick says, good, as everybody of Rick's group comes in the building, we see Guillermo with a big beard at this point. We also see Herschel with a big beard. We see a new com character come in. He's, like, looking through the whole area, and this character's name is Chris. Chris says, all clear over here, Tyrese. Jerry says, Roger that. Rick, Rick says, first step of action, check upstairs. Chris says he's right. Tyree says, I'll go upstairs and check. Emily, David, you're with me. Emily and David say, yes, sir. As we just get introduced to Emily and David, who are also a part of Rick's, well, not Rick's group, but Tyree's group. As Tyree, Emily, and David go, and go up uh, the stairs, you'll see Daryl also going up the stairs. They check each room, and they see no walkers. Daryl enters this one room, and uh, he sees an owl, and Daryl just grabs his crossbow and kills the owl. The next shot is Carl looking through all of the food and supplies. He sees all these cans, but there's no food in them. Sophia's like, you found something? Carl says, no, all these cans are empty. Two new characters also come in through the door. These two characters are Julie and, Mor and Morbius. As they sit down right next to Tyrese and his group, uh, Julie's like, Dad, I'm hungry. Tyrese says, don't worry, sweetie. We'll find food soon. Just gotta keep searching. No matter how long it takes. John Miller says, we've been traveling for over a year. Moving from place to place. We gotta. You know. Find a place to settle in. That's Tyree. Doesn't really say anything. Daryl says agreed. The question is where. Rick says I don't know. Hopefully we can find a. Place to stay soon. And we just see the shot. Rick just getting pissed. He's angry. He's just frustrated. Because he knows they've been driving on the road for a long time. As Sea Dog looks outside the window, he notices a big herd of walkers coming to the ho coming towards the house. They're, they're currently in. Sea Dog grabs his weapon. He's like, come on. As everybody is going in their, in their cars and they just drive away. The next shot is... Rick's group and Tyree's group, everybody just stopped all their vehicles and they just get out of their cars and they just grab a map and, and put it on the front front spot of the car. Tyree says, listen, we have nowhere, and I mean nowhere else to go, which is why we need to come up with a different strategy. Maggie then says, unless that herd catches up, us, up to us, we'll all get cut off and we can't allow that to happen. John says agreed, but question is, which one of these highways here are the most safest that don't have walker herds just rambling around? Daryl asks Glenn, "What you said? You said there was like a total of seven hundred and fifty-eight walkers." Glenn says, "Yeah, but that was just last week, though. There could be even more by now." Herschel then says, "There's a liver here could delay them. It could slow them down." Tara says, "Tara says, yeah, it could." But the question is, will it slow all of them down or just a few? Rick then says the best course of action is to double back towards this highway right here. John says, yeah, it's possible, but we also have to keep in mind that at any moment, these things could pop out of nowhere. P-Dog then says, yeah, but listen, 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 hold up, hold up. We've been through that already. We spent the whole winter trying to, you know. Dodge that shit. Rick says, yeah, but there's no other option here. There's no other option. She says, this game frustrating. 
As Rick just walks away. John says, I'll go. I'll go with him. Daryl says, me too. As John, Rick, and Daryl are walking on this train track, they notice something that catches their attention. They see the prison. And Rick is just like, wow. It's perfect. John says, yeah, great. It's just the only problem with that is, is that there's multiple walkers in front and the back of those gates right there. Meaning we might have to kill them. All of them. If we're going to get inside that person. Rick says, great. Daryl's just amazed by this, and he's like, holy smokes. The next shot is Rick showing everybody, everyone from his group, and he's showing everyone of Tyree's group of this person. Tyree smiles and says, this is just, ha, wow, just wow. Finally, a place we can stay and not be out in the fucking open. What a great area. Rick grabs his his bow cutters and he starts cutting the fence. Rick says, "All right, Emily, Beth, Guillermo, I need you guys to get the walkers' attention. Glenn, you too. Me, John, T Dog, Maggie, and Tyrese and Tara will, will, will go in one group and start killing multiple walkers." Guillermo says. Wait, what about you? Rick says, don't worry. If things go wrong, we have these walkie-talkies with us at all times. And just in case that there's a, like, you know, God forbid if anyone gets separated, we have these walkie-talkies on us ready to go. Guillermo says, sounds good to me. Before Rick leaves, he tells, Ter uh, not Tara, but he tells uh, Andrea, like, Andrea, listen, you're a pretty good shot. I need you on that tower right there as, as well as Carl, and I need you guys to have my back. Andrew, Andrea says, sure thing. Daryl says, I, you see that other, other, uh, other cell, cell block right there at the top of? I need you on that, that position post. Carol says, I'll, I'll go with Daryl. In case if he's in a jam. Rick Smiles says, fine. You two go. Sophia, I also need you to distract these walkers as, as well. Alan says, what about me? Alan says, if anything goes wrong, I need you to grab this walkie-talkie and be the man in charge of the radios. Alan says, fine. Rick says, honey, I need you to open this gate for me. So I can do my thing. And kill my walkers. Lori says, you got it, on." As Lori kisses Rick. And that's when Lori opens the gate. And Rick just runs with his by dawn revolver. We see a shot of Rick killing a mad walkers. And we also get this bad shot there. He grabs his crossbow. And he kills one of the walkers. Shooting in the head. Rick smiles as he continues to run. We also get the shot of Carl and Andrea. Killing mad walkers from their position. We also get this shot of Beth and and Glenn killing Mad Walker. Sophia sees one of the walkers as she grabs her knife and just kills one of the walkers. We also see this shot of Alan. He sees a walker and he just straight up kills it enraged because he is just upset. And the face he gives is he looks just upset. And haunted. As Rick runs to the gate, he sees his walker and kicks it down on the floor as he grabs the fence and closes it. He also grabs that thing uh, T Dog gave Rick off camera and he just uses that to tighten the fence so that the walkers don't get out. We get the shot of Lori killing, killing a walker and we also get this bad, bad shot of Rick and Andrea killing. Mad walkers together with their with their rifles. Andrea Andrea jokes and in, in, by saying, "Let me find out you're using another weapon, Rick." As Rick just laughs. Carol jokes saying that was fantastic. Daryl says, "Agreed." Carol asks, "Are you okay?" Or says, "Yeah." I say, "All oh, smile." Carol is talking with Sophia and she's just happy. And Carol's like, "Listen, kid, look." 
I haven't felt this fresh in this much space since we got that farm. Sophia smiles and says, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this place is awesome. <laughs> and we also get this nice shot of T-Dog, Beth, and Glenn, and John Miller are all just smiling in happiness. The next shot is is uh painting out it, where it's nighttime obviously and we also get this shot of daryl on watch and we also get this shot of morbius and david on watch with daryl david's like this place is fantastic daryl's like yeah it is in a very daryl like way david talks with, with daryl a little bit and we actually get to learn more about david david's like before the apocalypse i was i was uh i was a zoom pulley and then when the world went to shit, I was honestly scared. And I just didn't know what to do. But then that's when I found Tyrese. He helped me. He saved my life. He helped me up. And he was like, listen, it's either you die or you survive. Because sometimes in this crazy situation, you just have to survive. Otherwise, you're just going to die. There was like, that's great advice. Daryl's, uh, not Daryl, but David's like, yeah, the best advice I can ever be given by anybody. Tyrese may be a hothead sometimes. He may be on the edge sometimes, but he's just a person just trying to protect his daughter. He's just trying to protect us. And uh, I honestly don't blame the man. After what happened, after what happened with his daughter, Daryl's like, what do you mean by that? David's like, no, nah, never mind. It's just, it's. It's not my story to tell. It's not my place. If you want, you can ask Tyrese yourself in the morning. It's just, it's hard to talk about. Daryl's like, it's okay. I, I get it. Nowadays, there are lots of stuff that are hard to talk about. David said agrees. The next shot is back at the campfire. Uh, Julie is cooking food for Rick's group as well as Ty as as well as food for Tyrese and Beth and everybody else. Tyrese says, "Thanks, hon. You were always a fantastic cook." Julie smiles and says, <laughs> "Yeah, I must have gotten it from from mom before she passed away." Glenn's like, "What happened when the shit went down?" Uh, my mom. My mom turned into a walker. Um, I know my dad doesn't really want to talk about it much, but it's hard to talk about. Glenn says, I'm sorry. Julie says, hey, it's all right. I mean, we all lost people. John says, agreed. Otis says, hey, Beth, why don't you sing something for everybody? That song, uh. Your your brother said he used to love watching you sing when you guys were younger. That song, what was it? The Parting Glass. Why don't you sing that? That's like, I don't know. John's like, come on, honey. Come on, babe. Come on, come on. You got this. As John kisses Beth, confirming that they are officially together. That smiles and she's like, um, <laughs> oh, honey, days I had spent, I had spent it in good company. And then we also get Maggie and she's like, and oh. Comrades, I have lost. And then John also comes in and he says, Until death takes us one day. And all our love can become so strong until it breaks us all. And all the hearts, the parting glass, we come to wish to with you all. 
And good night. Enjoy. Be with you. As everybody claps. Teresa says. Tyrese says to Beth, John, and and Maggie, (laughs) as he smiles and laughs for the first time in a long time. And he's like, (laughs) Uh, uh, that is the most beautiful song I've ever heard. It's a beautiful. (laughs) Beth is like, you okay? Tyrese says, I'm going to go get some sleep. Good night, everybody. As everybody says, good night, Ty. And that's where Rick's like, guys, listen. I know you're all exhausted. And yeah, finding this place was indeed a big, good win. But we got to push more. They're still walking on the other side of the fence. And we have to do what we have to do to kill all these walkers. Tara says, agreed. And that's where Rick's like, from the looks of it, from those walkers on the other side of those fence, they look to be prisoners and guards. From the looks of things, this place fell pretty early. Like it happened a year a year ago. John says, yeah, I was thinking the same exact thing, those walkers. What's it like? They've been dead for a while, though. Which makes sense, and it makes more sense, though, for it to be a year. Which means there's probably still food in there intact. For the baby. For Lori. For the kids. For Carl. For all of us. There has to be more things in there as well. Daryl's like an armory? Rick's like, yeah. It has to be. And we also need to find a lot of stuff. Other stuff, too. Like food. Water. Medicine. Stuff like that. Davis like agreed. Rick's like, yeah, listen, listen. Guys, this place could be a fucking gold mine. It could be in that prison. We just gotta push in. We gotta push in good. We gotta kill every last walker in there. I'm talking about killing every last one of them until we get inside. Guillermo says agreed. And then that's when Herschel's like, we're dangerously low on ammo. You also have to be careful from how much time we use on our weapons. Mor- Morbius says, agreed. We also have to be careful from the weapons we got. We also have to be careful with the bullets. In my honest opinion, not to cut nobody off, I feel like we should count our bullets, like, you know, one by one, to, s- to calculate how many bullets we we should use on a day-to-day basis. Because the last thing we need is for all of us to waste our bullets and not have any left. Rick says, not a bad suggestion. Morpheus says, don't mention it. And <laughs> to be honest, I was, uh, I was a bullet maker before the apocalypse. And uh, let's just say I'm good with making bullets. Rick joke says, those skills might come in handy. Morpheus says, Why, thank you. Rick then says, we, We're going to have to go in there hand to hand. Tara's like, Let's go. He actually smiles and she's like, Let's go. David's like, Count me in. Chris's like, Oh, please, slowpoke. You'll probably be running like a penguin. David's like, Ha ha, very funny. Idiot. No, you were the idiot, bro, bro, bro. There's mad walkers in there, yet we have to come up with a plan to do something. Rick then says, hey, guys, guys, listen, don't worry. We can handle it. I have faith that we can do it. Then that's when Rick looks at Carl, and he's like, we gotta kill all these assholes, right? As Carl smiles. As Rick walks away, Lori sees Rick, and, and Lori just goes over to talk to Rick. Lori says, stay with Uncle John. Carl says, yes, ma'am. Rick's like, listen, I, I really do appreciate everything you're doing here, Rick. But um, I hate to ask. Is it okay that we, you know, 
settle down here just for tonight, enjoy it just for tonight, until we wake up in the morning? Brick says, yeah, absolutely. As Rick walks away, Lori's like, listen, I know you're mad at me. And I will commit, I, I'm stupid for, for, for not telling you this in the first place, but I'm just saying, I, I love you, and I, I love this baby, and I love Carl, and, and I don't, I just want you to know nothing's going to change that. And yeah, the baby is coming, she's about to be here, and once we get in, the, in that prison, all, all I'm saying is we need to come up with a plan in order to have the baby about, and then Rick cuts the lawyer off by saying about what? As Lori looks at Rick, Lori's like, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, Rick. I know you're mad. I, I know you're... I know you're mad. It's just... I love you so much. And... <laughs> I don't want anything to change between us, Rick. I love you. As Rick just walks away in anger as Lori cries. Gary's like, you okay? Lori just walks away and doesn't say anything. The next shot is morning, and uh, T-Dog's like, you ready, Rick? Rick says, I'm ready that I'll ever be. How about you, John? John's like, let's go. Let's run this crazy, crazy dead people down. Daryl says, agreed. Tara's like, oh, let's just get in there and kill all these crazy motherfuckers already. All right? Maggie says, yep. Uh, no arguing there with you. Let's go. Rick's like, all right, let's open this door. As Rick opens the door, we see Daryl, T-Dog, Rick, John, Maggie, Tara, Glenn, and Tyrese, they are all sticking together as they kill mad walkers. Tara karate kicks one of the walkers down the floor. Actually, grabs her gun and shoots this walker in the head, and she just kills mad walkers. There, Tyrese body slams one one of these walkers. Walkers as he just stomps this walker's head in. We also get this badass shot of Daryl and John Miller as they pat grab their weapons and they just kill mad walkers side by side together. Rick karate kicks one of, the one of these walkers as he grabs his python robotter and just shoots his walker in the head. Maggie grabs a knife and kills w one of these walkers as Maggie looks up a at Glenn smiles and says, You saw that? And then Glenn kills Mad Walkers. And then that's where we get this bad shot of T Dog. He grabs like this metal rebar thing and he just kills Mad Walkers. We also get this shot of, of Daryl. He grabs his knife and kills one of these walkers by stabbing it in the head. John Miller grabs his shotgun and kills two walkers. We also get this, this shot of of Guillermo, Sophia, and Dale. They're killing mad walkers. And we also get the shot of Dandra. She has her rifle and kills mad walkers with her rifle. As we also get the shot of Otis and Trish killing mad walkers with their knives. Patricia jokes by saying, nice move. So Otis and Otis like, haha, very funny. This next shot is we get this opening shot of all the other characters are all standing, but then camera pans out where we see all these walkers dead on the ground. Tara's like, we did it. John Miller's like, hell yeah, we did. We did it together as a group. Daryl says, yep, absolutely. As he, as Daryl smiles and pats John on the back. The next shot, Daryl opens opens uh one one of the doors to the prison as Rick has his machete in his hand, and, and John enters the room as well. They're all looking around it. They're being as cautious as possible, and they notice that uh that there's nobody in there. There's no people. There's no walkers in this section of the prison. As they look around, they're like, "Holy shit! This place looks." A little deserted, but a little cleaning up. We could make it look nice. Rick says agreed. As Rick goes up these stairs, 
he he op- opens one of the doors and sees this dead cop just straight up dead. Rick sees these key, keys to uh to, to uh the prison doors. He just grabs them and he just walks away. As Daryl and Rick open open uh open these cells to Block C, they see more trash everywhere, but they notice that there's no walkers in this area. There's no walkers in this area, period. Rick's like this would do. John says, Yeah, absolutely. This place is <laughs> wow. Finally, we can be in an in a, in indoor fronts and not out in the fucking road. Rick says, "Yeah, that's an understatement." The sanctuary. Daryl says, "Yeah." The next shot is Lori and everybody else coming in in the cell block. Beth is smiling and she's like, "Wow." As T Dog is, is dragging out the two dead bodies they found up up in cell block C, uh Lori just looks around and is like, Wow, this is actually a pretty decent setup. Beth is like, Wait, we so we while we sleep in the cells? Daryl's like, Listen, I'm not sleeping in no fucking cage, we're gonna sleep out here on the floor. John's like, Bro, are you you sure you wanna you wanna do that? Daryl's like why not? As as John and Daryl F. Rick then says later later on today we'll we'll search to see if there's an armory in the cafeteria because let's be real this prison this prison's big meaning we could probably find those two areas as Lori says agreed. Rick then says listen I found some keys off some dead guard and. Uh, I believe these keys belong to different parts of the prison. As uh, the next shot pans out, where we see everybody else, they're they're looking at the cell blocks. We see the shot of of, the, of Beth. She's like pretty gross. And John's like yeah, but I believe with a little bit of cleaning up, we should be able to fit in this place pretty good. John's like. I love you, Beth Green. You know that, right? Beth's like, I love you too. And they both kiss. Next shot is Glenn and Maggie entering this, this cell together. And they are like, finally. Maggie smiles in happiness as Glenn also smiles. Glenn, uh, Maggie's like, what are you doing? Glenn's like, I'm just checking for, for bites. This time when anything happened to you. As Maggie says, aww. How sweet as they both kiss as well. We see this next shot of, uh, of Guillermo and Tara checking out this cell block. And they're like, I guess this would be my room. Guillermo's like, wait, where am I supposed to fucking sleep? As Tara's like, well, you can sleep in uh, the cell right next to me. The cell that's, you know, in the other section. Guillermo's like, ha ha, very funny. And they both laugh. The next shot is Carol and Lori in the cell. Carol's like, you think the baby's going to come soon? Lori says, I have no idea. I just, I just hope it all goes well. Carol says, yeah, me too. The next shot is with, with uh, Carl and Sophia. They're like playing cards. Sophia's like, check me. Carl's like, what? No. No way. That's so stupid. That's so not fair. As as Ben, well, not Ben, but Billy, he, he, he's like, ah, see? See that? Two strikes and you're up. Carl's like, come on. Sophia's like, yep, we got you again. Carl's like, ha ha, very funny. That's where Billy's like, well, huh? I'm just going to tickle you both anyway. Bill's like, Bill's like, tickle, tickle, tickle. Carl's like, get off me. Come on. Get off me. <laughs> the next shot is Billy Green. He's talking with uh, Herschel. Billy Green asks Herschel, what do you think about this place overall, Dad? Dad, you okay? Herschel's like, yeah, I'm fine. To be honest with you, I believe this place looks nice. 
And I believe we can make this work as Billy Green smiles. The next shot uh, is Rick, T-Dog, uh, Herschel, John, and, and Daryl. They're like looking at these guns and they were like, so these are all the guns we've you guys found from the cell block in total. John's like, yeah, absolutely. As you can see, there's like two pistols, a shotgun, um, this big stick thing, whatever this is. I have no, honestly, no clue as to what it is. But point being, these are the weapons we found so far. Tito's like, yeah, these are all the weapons. Unless we're missing something. Rick says, nah, this this will do just fine. Then that's when Carol comes in the room and she's like, Herschel? Brooks like everything's all, all, like, all right, like, okay. Carol says, yeah. Just, uh, Lori needs Herschel's help with something. Rick says, okay. The next shot is Lori talking with Herschel and Lori's, like, telling Herschel, listen, the baby, I, I, I think I lost it. Herschel's like, wait, you haven't felt a move at all? Lori signs saying no. Corey then says, at first I thought it was exhaustion, but now it's something like nutrition. Herschel, listen, if we're all infected, so is the baby. I'm <laughs> nervous. But then again, I'm like, okay, what if, it, what if it is still born and it, or what if it's, <laughs> what if it's dead inside me right now? What if it just rips me apart, becomes a locker? Baby, and it just, <laughs> Herschel screams, stop. Don't let your fear take control of you. Alright? Everything's gonna be okay. Or he's not like, okay, save a dove's glyph and say, say I die of childbirth. I had to scream and I, I said, the Carl, you're gonna beat this world. I had a fucking dream and I said that. And I remember screaming, and then that's when I heard the baby crying and screaming after I gave birth in a dream. I, I'm i scared. I don't want to die during childbirth, Herschel. Herschel then says, listen, listen, listen. Like I said, that's not going to happen. And then Lori's like, asking the question of Herschel, saying, why not? <laughs> How many women died in childbirth before this whole fucking thing went down, huh? <laughs> Say if I come back as a walker, and if I attack it, or you, or Beth, or Carl, or Rick, then what? But listen, <laughs> Herschel promised me, if I do, if there's any chance that I come back as one of those things, as a fucking walker, I want you, I want you, or John, to kill me. I don't want it being Rick. I don't want it to be Rick. It has to be either you or him. Either you or John. It can't be Rick. It can't be my son. I can't. I just... Uh. Okay. Listen. I want you. You have to put me down. If I turn into one of those things, you put me down. You don't hesitate. No matter how sad you are. No matter how hard it is that you think it is to do so. You fucking do it. Please. Herschel says, okay. You know, Herschel, it, it would have been better. Herschel says, if if what? Better if what? Lori, better if what? <sighs> if I never made it off that farm. Listen, Lori, you're exhausted, horrified, frightened. Don't say that, okay? I don't believe you should have never... You should have died on that farm. None of us do. Don't say that. True. True. I know my son loves me. I know. I know. Everybody else loves me. I, I know. I know you guys don't want to see anything bad happen to me. But, but Rick. He hates me. A part of himself hates me. And I know he's not going to say it, but. I messed up. I had sex with Shane, and I... I may have forgot sometimes, but that doesn't excuse the fact that I still did so. And that doesn't excuse the fact that... That this child isn't Rick's. 
child. I know that now, and I know that, and I know. I, I don't want to lose my husband, you know. I do. I don't. I don't want him to hate me forever. As Lori and Herschel hug, Dale sees this, and he is just a little upset. And he just feels for Lori in this moment. The next shot is Carl and Billy. They're 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 putting on these helmets. Billy Green's like, what are you two doing? Billy's like, oh, come on, Billy. We're just playing around with these helmets. Billy Green's like, ha, ha, ha. John jokes and says, you know those stupid little helmets are going to make you guys go colorblind, right? And John looks at Beth, and Beth just smiles at John. Rick's like, listen, you won't need that girl. Rick's like, listen, I need you to stay put. Carl's like, you're kidding. Now John, and then John comes in, he's like, now Carl, just hear your dad out, please. Rick then says, he's right. You know what's in there. Which is why if something goes wrong, I need you to be on the other side of these cells. If anything happens, you can be the last man standing. As Carl smiles. Where Rick also says, listen, I need your help to help things here. Carl says, okay. The next shot is Rick, John, Daryl, T-Dog, Maggie, Glenn, and Alan, and Tara. They are going down this hallway, and they are... Looking around and they notice there are multiple dead walkers in this area with gunshot wounds in their heads. As they continue to go down the hallway a little bit, Maggie, Glenn, John, and T-Dog, and Tara get separated from the others as they go down this, this opposite hallway. But only this time there's no dead walkers, it's just this dark hallway. Glenn sprays, uses the graffiti, graffiti and sprays the wall, making an arrow. Glenn asks Maggie, are you okay? Maggie says, yeah, I'm fine. As the music starts back, gets gets started in the background, Rick is continuing going down the hallway, but he sees this walker is completely bitten with both his legs missing as mad blood is on the floor. Alan is like, holy shit, the hell? And then that's and then out of nowhere, this walker bites Alan on, on on the bottom part of his leg as he screams. He, Alan falls to the floor as Rick comes out of nowhere and he just kills the walker using his pipe foam revolver, shooting that walker in the head. Alan screams and he's like, holy shit, Tara, John... Glenn, Maggie, they they come in and they're like, "Holy shit!" As as Frick's like, "Come on, we got we got to get him, we got to get him somewhere safe." There's Mad Walkers coming. Tyrus comes out of nowhere. He tackles Mad like two Walkers on the ground and kills them both. Frick's like, "What are you doing here?" Tyrus says, "I'm just here to help." As Tyrus kills two Walkers, Tyrus look look. They see the sign that says cafeteria. They kick down the fucking doors and they all get in. Daryl, Rick, T Dog, Tara, John, Glenn, Tyrese, Maggie get Alan inside the cafeteria. And Rick's like, there's only one way to keep him alive as he takes off his belt buckle, puts it on Alan's, uh, Alan's uh, leg, and he just grabs his hatchet and just straight up cuts off Alan's. Leg as Alan screams, but then passes out. John and Daryl are are like, get down. As Rick and John grab their weapons and they're aiming it at these prisoners, and one of these prisoners, his name is Alex, and he's like, holy shit, and boom, that is the end of the episode. Next episode, we're going to be introduced to the to uh to the other prisoners and uh there are big questions like where's Avesta? when will the governor be introduced stay tuned because season season three episode two titled sicken is coming so stay tuned for that episode guys please like comment and subscribe and as always peace out